well, we recorded that at TTG Studios on Highland near Sunset, which was a really huge room. And then the control booth. It was really a, quite a, a really good studio. And I, I what I do remember is, uh, uh, well, for instance, uh, when we recorded Brown Shoes, which I, I think I remember more about that song than any of the others, because it was probably the hardest song on the album. And But we had to record the song in eight bar segments. And mostly because, uh, well, the bass player and drummer didn't read music at all. And I was not a great sight reader, although I could read some of it. So we had to do, we had to, what we had to do was learn that eight bars. And then, then Zappa would record it about 20 times. And then we'd learn the next eight bars, and then Zappa would record that 20 times. So, and this is a long song. <laughs> I can't even imagine how much tape that he used recording this one song. It's quite amazing. And the other thing was that the band played as an ensemble in uh, on this record, uh, a lot of it, for the most part. I won't say the whole part because I'm sure Bunk will uh, say that he overdubbed a lot of stuff, and and uh, I'm sure that uh, possibly the guitar and and I know Zappa did uh, a few of the vocals on that, and and Ray Collins did the vocals on that, and I'm sure that he overdubbed a lot of that. So, but the instrumental part, uh, we recorded that the way I just described. Uh, some songs we could actually uh, go right through, but uh, that one was a tough one. And one thing about Brown Shoes is that we we talked about doing it in, in this current band, and the guitar player absolutely refuses to do it, you know, because of the nature of, you know, screwing your daughter on the White House lawn and, and you know, all kinds of other inferences of little girls and everything and I, I don't I, I don't want to do it either you know it's it's just too in this day and age you know you're you're advocating incest or whatever child uh, whatever <laughs> I think he was being in, intentionally uh, trying to well first of all when he wrote the song None of those subjects were taboo as they are today. It's funny because a lot of things that aren't taboo today are, were taboo then. But usually, you know, speaking about sex or, or even sex with young girls, nobody thought much about it, you know. I mean, it, it wasn't considered oh, horrible, you know. Life in prison, you know, what all that stuff. Uh, no, I mean it was just some people did it and some people didn't. You know, that's pretty much the most of what was going on. So in that light, uh, even though those words are like sensationalized, they uh, they weren't they weren't that badly thought of it at that time. It, it was shocking still, but, uh, you know, not that much. Uh, first of all, the intro to that piece is, is something I devised. Actually, I stole it from someone else. <laughs> there was a band, uh, I wish Bunk was here, he could help me out with this. Um, well, it was it was like a corny big band, and they uh, they were most famous for playing New Year's Eve, you know. And and the the intro that I play on that song, they played on every song that they played, you know. It was dun 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 dun, you know, like in 
and then they'd start playing it. But no matter what song it was, they would play it on every song. So I thought it'd be perfect for this song, you know. Um, uh, I don't know what I could comment more than that on this piece, though, because it was just uh, it's a very interesting song uh, from a chord, you know, the chords in the song. They really go all over the place, and, and it's very, very interesting for me for that. Um, actually, uh, I heard the California Ear Unit, and they, and they only play pieces by Cage and Boulez and Zanakis and all those compo and composers you never heard of. And they played that song only they played it really fast. And so I, that's another case of, you know, like these young classical people playing Zappa's music. Um, it's, the rest of it is like sound effects and, and Ray Collins, of course, going on with this dialogue, uh, which he made up, you know, he was just uh, improvising. But that's the kind of stuff he could do. I mean, he could really do that stuff fast.